Hey there guys and welcome to another one of these live 2D tutorials where we will start preparing our face rig for rigging with the parameters here. So I very quickly introduced the deformer window here. What I would start with is press the very bottom of your layer list and then hold down shift and press the very top of your list again so we have it selected. Now let's make a deformer. So this is a, a deformer button. We can create a warp deformer with this button and we can call it body and we're going to create it. So now we've got this big box, bounding box for our face rig. So that means that we now have a bit of a hierarchy going on here. So we've got this warp deformer and we got the drop down for it, which is all of the uh, layers that we had selected. So we can now close that if we wanted to. And also, just to say, now that you have this, it's grouped up all of the layers together so you can move it around like this. And because it's a deformer, you can change the shape of it. This is why it's important to do the auto mesh generator here, because if you didn't, you wouldn't be able to do such deformations in the first place. This is really cool in, in the sense of you can do whatever you want in terms of movement with this. We've got the main body down. This is pretty useful if you're planning to do breathing animations for your character, a uh, very subtle movement. This would be a good time in itself to consider what other parts you want to group together. You don't have to always animate with deformers like this. You can still animate with individual layers, but it's good practice to start off with deformers, I feel, and break it all down and group it all up together. So let's group up our face rig. I know we just did the warp deformer of the body there, but we're going to make another one. We're just going to call this, let's just click on deformer again. We're going to call this main body. I know that my naming conventions are not the best, but let's make a deformer here. So now that the body has its own deformer, uh, we can also drag in what we've got here too into the body deformer. So we're going to highlight literally everything here to do with the head and the face itself and we're going to drag it into also the body deformer, the main, the main body deformer. You have to make sure that when you highlight it, click, like drag it directly over the top of this otherwise it won't work. Uh, so now we have it made so that we can deform the head and the jelly at the same time, which is pretty neat. I would like to make a standalone face deformer. So we're going to highlight the head highlights that I have, the eyes, the eyebrow, the eyelid, the mouth, open mouth and tongue. And we're going to call this one face. So now it's, it's in its own deformer. It's still under the main body deformer as well. So it's still all linked together. So this means we can now move the face around like this and we will also, we can also deform the face. Now I will say just as a little bit of information about how to use these, please don't use these points. I beg of you, they they will be the bane of your existence. Don't mess with those. Always use these. I think that generally it gives you a much, more, much more natural movement. You don't have to sculpt everything from scratch using these points. Just use these that are already there, the, the little bezier handles to, to give you the subtle uh, movements and deformations you need. So of course this means I can make the face look to the left, I can make it look to the right, that kind of stuff. I will say I think I might want to move the highlights of the head to the, the head deformer that we're going to make right now. So I'm just going to literally select the, the head highlights which you can see here. And I'm going to just take them out of the warp deformer. There you go. You're not stuck with the deformer. You can drag and drop things outside the deformer if you need to. 
So next we're going to just make a deformer for the head. And it's already named head, just create it. And also if you want to resize this bounding box here, all you have to do is hold down the control key and click and drag with the left mouse button. Just keep holding it down. And you can mould it a little bit closer to the actual head in this case. There you go. So that means we can now stand alone deform the head itself. It also has the highlights in there. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a rotation deformer. So this can be good if you want to add rotation to a part of your face rig. Since this is the head, this is the most common use of using rotation. So we're going to give that a try. We're going to make this the head rotation. And so you see this little tool here, which will allow you to rotate the head. If you want to change the position of the rotation anchor point, and that's usually what you would call it, an anchor point, just drag it to where you want it to go using the control and left click like you did with the bounding box of the deformer. And so we can create a rotation like this. Now the question is, do I want the rotation to be that far down? Because my character doesn't actually have much of a neck, so how does it look if I do this? And it probably is no different actually, but you know, it is it's better I think. Let's just keep it like that. Now of course as you noticed, as we were rotating this, the face is still in place. It's because the deformer of the face is above the head itself. So the way to fix this is, is you can just select the whole entire face deformer and then add it under the head rotation. So it's right there. Let's see what it looks like. There you go. It's now moving with the head. If you select the warp deformer of the body, the head stays stationary, it doesn't get squished. Which might not be a bad thing really, um, but if you wanted a little bit more control over the head itself, combine the face with the head here, the head deformer. So then you can actually squish it down like this, because before you wouldn't have been able to have done that before. You would have squished down the head and the face wouldn't squish. Let's show that again. You can combine the, the face deformer with the head deformer. Make sure that you're highlighting the warp deformer when you drag it. And there you go. It's now within the, the head deformer, so that means the face will also deform with the head deformer. Now you're probably wondering why would you make a face deformer in the first place. This is quite crucial if you want to make a certain perspective of the face as you're turning your head, which we will get into soon. But it is quite important to be able to do whatever you want with it. You can move it around like this, but you can also mould it to whatever angle that you want when we start making the different facial perspectives. So I'd say that the head is pretty much done. Now next I have these little patterns going on with the body and I want to be able to de deform these so I can add a little bit of a, a motion to his head rotations. I'm going to add individual deformers for this too. So we're going to call this one pattern one. So now we have pattern deformers for the pattern parts. So like I say, this will give me far more control over its deformation 
than trying to use the actual pattern itself. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing in the world to deform with individual vertices like that. You can do it like that if you want to, but it's not very time efficient really. I would always, always be using the, the deformers here. It gives you far more uniform and just nicer results overall. Uh, next is the highlights here. I feel like there's not going to be much deformation with these, but it's still good practice to just make more deformers anyway. Let's just call this highlight one. Highlight two. And highlight three. So we have those, let's drag these into the Warp Deformer main body. And then lastly we have these, which are more the expressions that I have for the character itself. You can't actually see them right now, but I can unhide them. They are currently hidden because of this. You can hide and unhide layers here. Anything in a folder, when you hide it, will hide everything. Those are the hearts, so you can see them. I am trying to think what I'm going to use these for because I don't see myself really deforming the hearts at all. But if I do want to make them all move uniformly together, and and I guess for the sake of for the hi hierarchy here, it might help kind of group things up a little bit better for me visually down here. So I'm going to still make the deformer for all of them together. Again, I. Th I think, I, I think I'll just leave it there actually, I won't put it into the main body warp deformer right now. The same with this, all the stars, let's unhide those so we can see them. I'm going to turn them into uh, a deformer too. So we've got that as well, and then we've got the blush, which I'm going to unhide as well. I'm going to make a deformer called blush. And then sweat drop again. Like these are very unlikely that I'm gonna deform, but it's just I, I think it's just safe. Pretty safe if you just make deforms out of everything if you can. And then just call this uh sweat drop, sweat drop, I guess. And create. But hopefully you kind of get what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to group things together uh for convenience. They're kind of like folders, like it is up here. But it also has the added benefit of being able to deform things if I need to. Uh, for now, I'm just going to minimize all this because it's getting a little confusing. I'm just going to hide the uh, potential facial expressions at the minute because we don't need those right now. You, you can also see the deformers here, by the way. I think you can pretty much put these deformers wherever you want, but I. I would recommend keeping it within the folder that you've made them in so that it's not so confusing to find. But yeah, you can find the deformers themselves here, but I would personally say that using both this window and this window can be quite helpful in their own ways. Uh, so don't just stick to one particular win window, uh, especially if you want to hide and unhide things like this. It's quite good for this window in particular. But you can use both windows at the same time and utilize it really well for your workflow. Uh, we have set up our rig to effectively start using parameters and get the character moving. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope it's helped in some way in terms of how to uh, structure the face rig and how to get started with the deformers and the rotation tool. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it helped in some way. Uh, leave, leave any comments down below if there's anything you'd like to ask at all and I'll try and answer it the best I can. The next video will be all about actually getting this character moving and using parameters for achieving the movements for your face rig. But yeah, if you found this content useful, please, please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tu tutorials like this in future in your inbox and such. Uh, feel free to also click the bell as well because it will give you a notification as to where my next video will be out. And yeah, hope to see you all then. Take care guys. Bye bye!